Gosh, guys, we're having a crazy day today. We are having some Be Live challenges as we record our Savvy Entrepreneur Spotlight. So we'll just wait for Navari to hop on here with us. Um, I'm talking to him and Jamila. This is a day in the life of every time. See, I'm like, you guys can't really see, but I'm at National Harbor. Every time I try to do something fancy and go away from my house, then like, I can't get it clear. I can't get it right. Or Be Live doesn't cooperate. So we're gonna just do it here. We're still gonna once Navari hops on, then we will add him to our um, to our session, and we will just continue here. So I know him and Jamila are probably both still trying to figure out what the heck. They're probably they're both in Be Live. Their systems are working fine, and mine wasn't. But say la vie, it happens, right? A day in the life of. So we'll just sit here. So let's see, what are some exciting things that are going on? Melissa had joined us for a second. She probably saw the quirkiness and hopped off. Hey, Jamila, I see you. Just tell Navari to come on over. And then once he comes over here, then I will just add him and we will just do it here, kind of like how we did Karen's um, in the end. Uh, hi, Melissa, how are you? Sorry, everyone's looking at me crazy. I'm in the restaurant. <laughs> hi, Melissa. We're just waiting for Navari to join us. We were all on Be Live, and because I decided to be adventurous and you know go outdoors today and enjoy the sunshine, uh, everything's wonky and it's not working well. So Navari's gonna hop on in two seconds. He's already in Be Live, so he'll just hop on over here with us. I still see him on Be Live, Jamila. Just tell him to uh, to hop on over here. Melissa, how's everything going? Just post something in the comments. We're so excited that you won the contest. Oh, I know, best week ever. So excited. So Jamila, um, so all your stuff is here. I have all your books and all that stuff. And we're gonna get the, there's Navari. We're gonna get that stuff to you. And then next week, we're gonna start working on your website and your digital brand premium. Awesome. Let's see, okay, Navari, I'm going to, can't bring Navari on. Oh. They can't join, can't bring Navari on camera. They can't join your broadcast at this time. Navari, why can't you join my broadcast right now? What the heck is that about? I can't bring anyone. All right, guys, this is... Allow your viewers to request to join. See if you can request to join, Navari. To request to join you as a guest in your broadcast. See if you can request to join as a guest. Got it, I know. So blue like today. Oh, we have all these tools. I think we really might just leave Be Live in the past and jump to zoom navari does it give you an option to request to join you might have oh you have to be on your mobile that's another thing you can't do the the share thing on your karen and i figured that out you can't do the share thing um, and don't worry i will chop and screw this video so <laughs> it will we will not have all of this on the replay that's posted Anyway, what else is going on? So we had some really cool stuff. Melissa won the contest. Tabitha was number two. Navari was number three. And then, um, you know, we had the GDPR thing. Oh, what a pain in the tush that one was, right? So, you know, outside of just sending out emails. Okay, the funny part about the GDPR is that we spent all this time sending out emails and preparing landing pages and all this stuff, right? There's no harm. And, and everyone was like, oh my gosh. I Like all my friends that are not in digital marketing, I saw all their posts online. They're like, I'm so tired of this GDPR thing. If I get one more email that from someone about this GDPR, and we're all stressing to get all this stuff out. And everyone on the receiving end is like, please don't email me another gosh darn GDP <laughs> notification or else I will unsubscribe oh what a funny place to be in cool so we're waiting what else 
else is going on? GDPR, contest, uh, inner circle. Oh, convert to customers is about to, I know, right, Joella? Convert to customers is about to launch again. And we are redoing the course completely. So those of you who already have the course, you will automatically receive the updates. Um, we're gonna redo each and every module. Anyone who doesn't have the course, um, it'll be an exciting time for you to get it. That is mid-June. And um, we're going to launch that. And I don't know. Let's see. I don't know. Our private series. I heard something. I see Navari. I can't still bring them. Melissa, how's everything going with you? Are you okay? Thank you. I'm trying to be all fancy. So I am at National Harbor, Maryland. Out by the water. I'm gonna do something different on this sunny day. And every time I try to do something different and sunny, we have technical problems. So I'm just gonna stay in the house and show you guys my boring, boring, boring lab in order to get good video. Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa's like, I gotta go. This is boring. And blue leg. I'm gonna hop off and then we're gonna start again. Melissa, we are, oh, let's see, I think the is back. We're gonna start again. Oh yeah, so also, hashtag ask me anything. So starting this month, Joel is gonna send out a notification. Um, we're gonna start something where we do a Facebook Live once a month and it's gonna be for you guys to ask me anything in reference to web design, digital marketing, social media, whatever business um just type in the group hashtag ask me anything and ask your question and then when we have the um, live stream what we will do is just search the group for that hashtag and pull up all of those questions so <laughs> i know I'm about to, yay <laughs> it's good melissa there's a lot of times we spend all of our time like trapped in our offices, right? Ugh. We'll probably restart this um, in a second. I don't know. I'm a good babbler, but only oh, so good. So okay, let's let's be fully transparent here. Since I'm here amongst friends with Melissa and Jamila, so this is what my this is what this is what it looks like here. It's my buffalo shrimp. It's delicious. And then there's my favorite. Oh, I'm day drinking. <laughs> and that's our tech, that's our glitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's our glitch. So we really, <laughs> we really did try. Uh, let's see. Okay, let's see. Entrepreneur, of the, entrepreneur of the month. Yes, Jamila is trying. It's like she's on the line. I go, oh yay, we got the fun. Let's see. While Navar is adding, I'm actually gonna pull up. Well, I don't know. Let me not touch anything before something blows up. I pull up our sauna. We use a sauna for all of our project management, our editorial calendar, and I mean, it is a madhouse in there. We're going to stop, slow down, and reassess because otherwise it's out of control. <laughs> Melissa, right? They think it's the best. I don't even and the bathrooms, I don't even know if that's him. He's being at it right now, but it's, it's slow. Everything's slow. So, Melissa, have you been thinking about um, your website and your digital brand and where you want to take that? Oh, it's so different, Coco. Navari! Oh, my gosh. Navari? Oh, I can hear you. <laughs> can you hear me? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Whoa. Oh, I got a filter. <laughs> oh my gosh how are you Navari I'm doing good I'm doing oh. good this is a uh, learning experience. oh my gosh I so apologize every time literally every time I try to leave my house to do something fancy the system blows up on us <laughs> it sucks. Everybody seems to be fine. what did you say 
I said, can everybody hear and see me fine? I can hear and see you fine. Let's see. I'm trying to figure out how to see if everyone else. I'm literally like, <laughs> I'm telling you to help me think about that. Yay! Absolutely. Yay! Jamila says yay. So I think we're in the bar. Tashawn. Hey, Tashawn. So I think, I think we're live in the bar. Awesome. Okay. okay. So I'm going to see what I can do. Usually I do a lot of sharing while we're doing this thing, but I kind of like have my phone held up. Oh, it's in the mind. So I have a quick question for you. Does it offend you when we call you the golden child? I'm sorry, Andre. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's uh, I like that. Good. We just kind of ran uh, with it, you know. I was like, you know what? I don't know how you feel about that. <laughs> Jamila says she can hear you, but she can't see you yet. So hopefully she will be able to see you soon. So I'm gonna just go low, guys. So I'm gonna sit this down so I can do multiple things. Awesome! So I'm gonna have to like hack this video up completely in order to do the replay. Right? <laughs> this is an interesting morning. How much time do we have you for? Um, I'm free. I'm free for an hour. Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, quiet a minute. No worries. Appreciate it. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> can you hear me well? Yes, oh, I can okay, hear you. Perfect. Yay! So, yeah, I think everyone can see you. Jamila, can you see? And we're just going to keep going. So I see you. Perfectly, so who knows what whose system is blowing up at the minute? So let's just dive in. Let's just dive 100. percent So tell us, this is all about the growth of intuitive creative agency and Navari as an entrepreneur. How's it been going? Uh, you know, it's it's been going pretty good. It's a, a definitely a learning experience every single day, learning um, and finding a trust in the process. Trust in the process, and um, it's starting to work. You know, I'm, I'm I'm really starting to see now. You know, it just takes a little time to get that get the ball rolling, but it's it's starting to work. Um, oh, okay. I'm starting to see the results. From it. Uh-oh. Can you hear me? Yeah, I You're breaking up. I know. Am I still breaking up? Yeah, I can see you now. Okay. You know what? Because I just have to turn this off. I wanted to try to share a video with people, but anyway, so you said it. What is it? You said it's finally working. Um, the pro uh, the process uh, that I've been using to pretty much um, build awareness for my brand, um, get clients to understand exactly what I do, what I'm offering, the amount of value I'm offering, for the price I'm charging. So, um, yeah, it's it's it, it definitely takes some time, but okay. <laughs> it's starting to get the ball rolling and. Um, yeah, I'm starting to see the results a lot. Uh, you know, the, the relationships are starting to be built. Um, the awareness is getting out there as well. And um, the opportunities are starting to knock. Um, I'm actually... Uh, June 13th, uh, I'll be speaking at um, uh, Mavericks on the Move. Yeah, uh, I was going to bring that up. Definitely. Am I still breaking uh, up? Brian Lobig and uh, Jamila Corbett. Yeah. Am I still breaking up? No. Okay. okay. Good, good, I can good, see good, you. Good. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. <laughs> Mavericks on the move. Was it June 13th with Jamila Corbett? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wanted to talk about that a little bit because, you know, one of the things that I think that you do really, really well, you have a pretty much an online business, right? 
But people don't understand that mm -hmm. in order to really make money online, a lot of the times you have to take your business offline, you know, as far as networking and building relationships. And you seem to do that really well. What motivated you to do that? How have you done that? And what are some of the successes that you're seeing from that? Well, um, <laughs> one, I'll be honest, join this, <laughs> join this community, oh, you know, and yeah. being, being involved, um, showing up and always oh, being wow. available, being supportive, you know, definitely allows me to, has been uh, working a lot and um, networking and collaborating with other brands helps big time as far as like growing my brand. Um, and also like more opportunities, uh, more projects, more client work, and uh, it helps. Sharing a lot of valuable content, everything that I'm learning, my wisdom, my failures, my strengths, just being more transparent, my journey is nice. definitely helping. Nice. So people are really like taking to the the transparency. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I found that. Uh, uh, Really telling more of my, my, my failures or struggles and challenges um, wow. through social media, like on Instagram. Uh, people really gravitate towards that more a lot and engage a lot more. So, um, awesome. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times we're yeah. afraid to do that, right? You know, it's like, ooh, if I put myself out there, especially on the Internet, you put something out there, you can't take it back. You know, so what, right. what was it that allowed you to be brave enough to just really – be transparent, authentic, and put it out there on the, for the world to see. Huh? Hi, mommy. It's my mom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had to. I honestly had to really like dig deep and think about my real why for you know doing this business, and um, I really wanted to inspire a lot of people. Um, that was like really one of my goes deep down in my heart, you know, as far as like me following my dreams and doing it. And um, yeah, I mean, for me, just doing it, I just felt like, I don't know, it just felt right, you know, I, I just felt like I just, I should do that, you know, and I just really wanted to help somebody else that's out there. I know a lot of millennials uh, want to you know, be entrepreneurs nowadays, it's pretty popular. And um, a lot of people don't really know what really goes into it behind the scenes, the amount of work, the late nights, the early mornings, the risks. Right, right. <laughs> All of that. All of that. Definitely. So let's let's start with your journey, right? When you first joined our community, our little family here, you were really, you know, just diving into the full time entrepreneur grind. You know, you were leaving the nine to five, which is so scary. And, you know, some of us are still afraid to take that leap. And, you know, then you just, you know, you were really transparent about the struggles and the challenges and your journey to where you are now. So just walk us through that. Like, you know, when you left, when you start building and where you are now. Well, I think when uh, we first <laughs> I spoke here the last spot. Like I think uh, it was January. I had just really quit my job, uh, December 2017, and um, it was it was a pretty scary risk um, at the time. I mean, I didn't do it the wisest way possible with you know a couple of months or a year month worth of runway. Um, I did a one month worth of runway, <laughs> so yeah. um, <laughs> It was a risk, but, you know, the opportunity kept knocking, and, you know, I decided to just make the leap, you know, the better time was than now, and, you know, I'm young. If I fail, then, you know, you know I can live with the fact that I actually tried. You know? Aww, but, um, and you're not going to That's fail. what pretty much did. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see that happening. I don't see that, I don't no. see that happening. <laughs> So what kept you going during those challenging times? You know, a lot of people would have been like, you know, this is not working. Let me throw my resume out there and get another job. What kept you pushing for? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. I mean I, I probably had like one moment where I really thought like, is this for me? Like, am I really an entrepreneur? Like, you know what I mean? It's like do I really have what it takes to do this? And um I had to really dig deep. It was like really like a soul searching session within myself to really see like 
how bad do you really want it? I just feel like I was just being tested. Mm-hmm. And um, in those moments, I was like, you know what? No, if I'm a, if I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna go out with a fight. So you know, I kept striving for it and um, really thinking about like, you know, why I really want to do this, why I risked everything for it. And when I really got, that's what really started me actually being more transparent online when I got to that point. Um, where I felt like it wasn't working, you know, you you putting yourself out there and clientele is going slow. And um, once I dig down deep inside, it's like, you know what? I'm just gonna tell people like, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm experiencing. Like, this is what entrepreneurship is really like. And people started engaging, <laughs> and I don't know. The next week, the business started picking back up again. <laughs> I'm like, this is crazy. So um, now with it from you know being a part of different group and networking more and getting myself out there. Um, the opportunities come and, you know, just collaborating is being a value of service to any and everybody I come across. You know, just, you know, awesome. So everyone popping in. So just to give a quick recap, we are at Savvy Entrepreneur Spotlight with Navari Carter. Of intuitive creative agency. He builds websites, he builds brands, he helps you really understand what your business is about. So, Phil, um, so if you have any questions, one, everyone just say hi, give us an emoji, let us know that you're here. I mean, we have people dropping in and out. So, just let us know that you're here and feel free to ask questions. Navari will answer them. So, ask questions about his journey, ask questions about your journey. Ask questions about building your brand, building a website, this GDPR thing. Let's dive into that, Navari. Oh, my gosh. I don't know if you were on when I said I was talking about how, like, you know, as digital marketers, we're, like, working hard to grind to meet this May 25th deadline, right, for this GDPR. For anyone watching or catching the replay who does not know what GDPR is, it is, like, this new EU privacy policy thing because I... Hi, Tashaun, because Facebook kind of, like, screwed up, and then the rest of the world said, oh, my gosh, we need to do something about privacy. Yeah, okay, first of all, privacy online does not exist. Am I lying? Never. Is there really a such thing as privacy <laughs> on, the, on the web? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> so, so the U, EU came up with this new standard, and it's May 25th, so everyone's running around like crazy. Everyone's getting all these emails about this GDPR on the digital marketing side. We're the ones creating the emails and updating our websites and our landing pages. And so I was telling everyone um, when you were connecting, Navari, that on my wall, all my friends who are not in digital marketing, they're so annoyed. They're like, if I get one more freaking email about <laughs> GDPR, <laughs> they're going to go crazy. So was that a big deal for you and your business or any of your clients? Um, for the uploading, um, as far as like clients now on the website, good for me on the, on the longer term of it. No, it wasn't that big of an impact okay. yet right now. Thank God. Because <laughs> we're still building for that me, list, uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So, so tell us a little bit, what are some of the things that you wanted to share? You've been with us. One, you are always on the workshop, so we're always growing together. Two, you're always engaged in the group. Um, you've actually been a spotlight before, so what made you decide to come back to, to give us another spotlight, give us another peek inside of your business? Um, I think that... I, I think that uh... I think my position I'm starting to realize is that uh, um, I'm like a, a living, breathing example of, you know, from start to finish, that people can really see, like, the journey from, you know, starting out entrepreneuring and, you know, the process of actually growing. And I think everybody's going to actually see over time, you know, with me actually growing from, uh, you know, being on here and, you know, from when I first started, go back and watch the videos on that, other previous spotlights and, yeah, I think I just want to just pretty much share my whole journey and process with everybody. Yeah, and I think that's going to be, like you said, exciting for everyone to go back and watch. So what has been your biggest challenge as an entrepreneur? Number one, just one thing you can pinpoint. You say, oh, my gosh, if I would have known. Wow. Um 
I have a couple, so <laughs> maybe the biggest one. Um, let me think about that one right quick. I think that along the journey, I feel like it's uh, figuring out how to scale your business, um, making the leap from being in the business to working in the business to working on the business. Ooh. And uh, Definitely building like that that pipeline that that sales funnel in a sense to you know, get yourself out of working in the business to working on the business. Um, so I I think that's probably much pretty much been like the biggest challenge, you know, because you really have to figure out a strategy and a plan to like really um, get yourself out there, you know, as far as like your price point starting in. Um, Cause I mean, it's, it's me, you know, for example, starting out as a freelancer and then turning into a business and switching over, um, you know, raising your prices, um, hiring contractors now for work, and yeah. more so to put yourself out there, you know, more so to keep working in the business and trying to do everything yourself. You know? So, awesome. so elaborate for us a little bit, right? So, like, I know some of the people in our community that are watching are like, "Well, that sounds profound." But what does that mean in the business versus on the business before the business? Um, <laughs> hold on, can, can you repeat that again? Yeah, what is, so basically, like, um, what does that mean? Like, when you say you're working in the business, what does that mean? You're working on the business. So pretty much, like, working in the business where um, you're actually in there doing the work that, you know, as far as you can hire somebody to do. So, you know, you're hands-on on all the projects. Oh, uh, it's so hard to get. Hands-on with all the emails and everything else, where as far as, like, the more you do that, the more you can really be spending time on finding more work, uh, networking, building the brand, uh, working on a vision, the next step, strategizing the overall view of it. And, you know, that's the ultimate goal to, you know, get in that position in a sense and, um, you know, have other employees, you know what I mean, working within the company uh, to help build that business. Awesome. So, that's, uh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So I think when Jamila just, you know, chimed in, the difference between working in the business and working on the business was a major moment for you. So what are some of the things that um, have helped as far as this, you know, working on the business piece? What are some of the things that have really helped um, grow outside of, you know, we talked a little bit about networking opportunities outside of that? Yeah, so pretty much, I mean, with it, um, I've joined uh, networking groups. Um, I mean, Savvy Entrepreneur, of course. Uh, also, uh, <laughs> BNI. <and I. laughs> and, um, you know, Pretty much with it, you know, just make friendships. I mean, meet new people, uh, build genuine relationships with people, you know, be supportive of, you know, others within your group, other entrepreneurs, and uh, see how you can leverage, you know, and collaborate with your brand with other um, entrepreneurs out there. And it just comes full circle, you know. If there's a project that, you know, I can collaborate with another entrepreneur on that have the same target audience or do something I don't technically do, you know, that's a way for us to both work and everybody builds and wins together. So. Awesome. So another reoccurring thing that's come up in our, you know, I have the inside scoop. So when, you know, we have our workshops and stuff like that, it's something that's reoccurring has always been this work-life balance. Um, you know, when you, that was one of the things when you first started out, you were like, whoa, how do I still have a life while being an entrepreneur? So tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, I, it's funny you said that because now when I'm thinking about that is one of the biggest challenges I did have to face, um, thinking about that now. Um, what I come to find out is there isn't a real balance. You just kind of, exactly. <laughs> you kind of balance, um, you find what works. You know when to stop, when to quit, when you need to take a break, when you need to go take a walk, when you need to go have fun, you know, Get out of the business. Don't let it dictate your life. And, um, you know, because life is still going even though.
you know, we, we're working all the time. So, the roses. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, I mean, with that now, you know, um, I don't force myself, you know, if I, if, I, if I feel like I can't think, you know, get up, you know, move, where you're working at, you know, don't work in the house all day, if you're working from home or, you know, at an office or uh, wherever it may be, you know, go to the coffee shop outside, go somewhere else and, you know, find out <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. So, that's perfect. You know, like right now, I mean, like enjoying dinner, I'm you know, <laughs> while I'm on here. Uh, next, you know, I was thinking next time we're so, dude, we're in the same town. Next time we're going to do this together. You know, like why do it on video? How about we just both come to yeah. the harbor, sit down together, have a little bubbly because you know I day drink. And I'll switch it for holiday, right? <laughs> 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 to live, enjoy the moment, you know. So, so Tashawn, Tashawn's here. Do you have any questions? She said, "This is um, Tashawn said this is a great live stream, very informative." What's going on, Tashawn? Awesome, Tashawn. Is there? Do you have any questions for Navari um, about his business, Melissa? Anyone else who's here with us, Jamila? You know, I'm asking all the questions, but this is definitely an interactive session. And again, you know, the, the action is always on the replay, but the cool thing about Navari is that he is a true member of our community. So you will find him in the group. You will find him in the monthly workshops. You will find him, I mean, he just won third price in the con contest. You know, he truly, when he says, you know, a big part of what's made him successful as an entrepreneur is showing up. I mean, Navari shows up and shows out. Melissa <laughs> 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 said, let her think about the question. Navari, so tell us on June 15th, when you're going with Jamila and Brian for this Mavericks on the Move, I'm going to try to show up. What What are you going to talk about? What are you doing? What's up, what are you doing on this panel? So pretty much, um, we're going to be discussing um, actually how to, the overall view of it is pretty much like how to build or find like a million followers online or get viewed by a million people, or nice, build a million, nice. million people audience, you know, in a sense, um, online. So pretty much on the panel, you have everybody has different perspectives. I mean, of course, for me, from the brand strategy side, Brian being the SEO side. And uh, Jamila, you know, she's going to be hosting the event. Who's also doing the uh, I am a brand, um, in a sense. So we just pretty much giving insight as far as like how to, you know, reach out to people through social media, um, you know, build a following online, how to build awareness online in general. And what's unique about this event, uh, in particular, on this panel, is that it's going to be outside um, at the RL RL Hotel um, in Dupont. So. You gonna have some people that's gonna be walking by, you know, getting fresh off from work, stopping, and you know they actually gonna be able to see this session. So it's pretty unique, but um, I think it'll be like a really good show. Up. Awesome. So let's, you know, I'm gonna ask some some real questions here too. I would say these are gonna these are the things that people really want to know, right? So all of these entrepreneurs out here, some of them are at different phases of their business. Um, as someone who left your nine to five in January and to start a business, how did you eat? How did you pay your bills? <laughs> how, did you, how did your cell phone stay on? All right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm gonna get real honest on this because I mean I, I think this is a reality check that a lot of people who really want to quit their job to do. Um, Everybody's journey is going to be different. Um, I would say for me, from somebody who jumped out there and took risks, um, I did have some clientele already built up, you know, as far as like from freelancing before I made the leap. Um, also, I've, uh, which, you know, collaborative work, so work with Steady always be coming in. And, um, what happens is reality is that once I made the leap, even though I had those things aligned, sometimes things just don't work out <laughs> as as going planned. And, uh, you know, something takes longer than expected. And that was my reality when it ended up happening. So I made the leap and thinking like, oh, man, like, I got this going on, this going on. And um, 
come to find out, you know, it didn't work out in the time frame, which I thought it would. And so that was one huge learning lesson. You know, I hopped out there in the job. I'm like, you know what? We're going to be coming in next week and the week after that and all that. And you know, I got a reality check that first week and uh, send out emails and everything. And, uh, you know, <laughs> so like the next week I go into it again and, you know, <laughs> I put in like 80 hours of work wow. and, you know, we put like towards the end of the month where I started getting responses and things coming back. But, uh, it, I mean, at, at one point it really did get real. I mean, you have, you have your slow months starting out and, um, you got to get really creative and strategic as far as like when things get slow. What are you going to do? You know, you have to keep this the train moving. And so, you know, during those time frames, you know, you look for help. You know, as far as me joining the community, I make the most of it. You know, with other entrepreneurs that get help. And, um, yeah, during those times, I mean, it brought out the best of me. I would say that, you know, oh, from then, God. you know, you figure out or you start working even harder, which is what I did, you know. And, and from then, you know, I was reading books all along the way, um, other design books. Um, books on business, books on marketing, um, other courses online, blogs, information. And, you know, what worked for me was just like, as I'm learning this along the way, I shared, you know, my knowledge, my experiences all along the way. And uh, it started engagement. And then I guess people started to feel like, hmm, this is a real thing going on here. And um, conversations and reaching out to other people and, you know, telling them my journey in a sense. Uh, people kind of like gravitated. I don't know work all to pay this bill. Awesome. I'm about to, I don't know how I'm about to pay rent, which, you know, things really got that real, you know, at mm -hmm. some points. Um, that's what I did. I mean, besides, like, of course, praying and, um, you know, reaching out. And I don't know, like, sometimes a light bulb just clicks. You know, something, what happened is, a, I'll give you a real situation that happened. Um it came a month where, uh, I'd say last month, things got really tight. And um, there was a client that I met like two or three months prior to um, that I've been trying to, you know, network with and kind of close a deal with. And it didn't fall through, which, which I thought it was. And right during that time frame, two months later, the relationship built from then, you know, reached out and was like, hey, I'm ready to go for my yeah. project. I'm like, What's your deposit? You know. The fifty percent. <laughs> 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 so definitely. So I mean it's I mean as far as that, I wouldn't advise anybody else who's starting to make the leaf from their job. Make sure that um, you know, you have your client base there, you know, you have a demand there to the point where it's like you cannot juggle work and you know, your business to the point where it's like your business is taking over, you know, I would say that's the best advice for anybody before they make the leap. Um, don't do what I did. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, it's, you know um, I've been rather fortunate, you know, along my journey, though, but I mean, everybody's journey is different, but I would say, you know, a better route of doing it is to make sure that, you know, you have that client base built and um, you actually have a strategy in which um, you're going to be generating more work and uh, build your audience, you know, as much as you can. Build your awareness as much as you can to make the lead. Awesome. I think that's a perfect segue. So we have a great question. By, we have a couple questions. One by Tayshawn. And he says, as an entrepreneur, how do you find your, and I put this in quotes repeated, target audience? I have a clear idea as to who my ideal client is, but my industry, which is the music industry, is very saturated. What advice would you give on this? Oh, what's going on, Tayshawn? Uh, <laughs> Tayshawn is a friend of mine. Um, yeah. So I'm glad you're watching. Hi, Tayshawn. Um, how to find a target audience? Um, you have to work on your strengths. It really boils down to you really knowing yourself and really knowing what your strengths are and playing to those strengths. So, um, like you say, work smarter, not harder. Um, Really stick to your strengths. I would say that, if, you know, if, if you, I mean, being that you're a producer, 
um, in the industry, I would definitely say that um, the type of music that you like um, target those type of clients that make the type of music that you like uh, to make instrument. I mean, instru uh, instrumentals for, or like to produce for. You know, ideal client. Like, who's a perfect correction for you? Giving advice, um, paying on time. Uh, you know, you have to really get an ideal in a sense of uh, what's the perfect client for you. So it is really part of a process of trial and error to work with a few people. You know, you might not want to work with an artist who has an ego, who's arrogant, and um, on time all the time to show up to the studio. Or, you know what I mean? So you have to, it really is a sense of trial and error. You do have to ask yourself out there in a sense to find your target audience in his field in particular. Um, I know that varies be between uh, different industries, but um, definitely, who, who would be the easiest person for you to work with to make the best work possible? I would say is your target audience. So once you figure out exactly what that is, then you know to find that. If it's somebody that you naturally um, get along with personally, or you like on a personal level, I would say is a good target audience for you. Um, you know, it varies, but that's something that, you know, you definitely have to really dig down deep and find out what helps you make the best music. Yeah. <laughs> and then just keep replicating that. Ah, so he produces music, and that's who he, what kind of clients he's looking for? Yeah, so he's a producer, so um, I guess he's looking for other artists um, in general to, to work with his target audience. Well, I don't know. That, I mean, that's a good question. Like, Tishon, are you asking in the sense of finding artists or finding uh, your audience as far as who's going to actually like your music or buy your music? Yeah. Um, and you may have I mean, multiple that, audiences, that, that, right? Very true. Yeah. Very true. And so just to summarize, um, you know, what you're saying is that, you know, your, your ideal audience is great. Your ideal audience could be broad. You know, your ideal audience is ideal you know but that target is going to be something different your target is really going to be like realistic it's who's going to pay their invoices who's going to respond to you in time who is going to actually be a paying productive customer definitely awesome i love that i love that and i agree i think that um like for example i i give this example a lot when i first when I, when I started or when I was in the midst of it, you know, I had my ideal clients. This is who I want. These are my personas. This is my avatars, you know, all these little fancy terms for your target audience, right? And then the reality was when I went back and looked at the metrics, most of the business, most of my business was coming. They were all referrals. As we know, referral is like the number one resource. That is the how we all get most of our clients. Um, but they were all, most of them were small businesses. I wanted to work with corporations. I wanted to work with federal I wanted to do all of this, but you can spread yourself so thin going after your ideal target that you're not really focusing on your true target. So I think it's important. And I think that's kind of like what I'm getting from, from what you're saying is that to make sure that you focus on your true target. Who's going to pay that invoice? <laughs> who's going to, who's going to sign that contract? Yeah. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. And Tayshawn, I would say one way too that you can, really identify who that person is one it's like to really hone in on like other attributes of that person so if your target audience is um and i don't know much about the music industry but if like you know you're talking about let's just make it easy right you're talking about selling music which is not easy in itself at all it's hard but to find out who your customer is is easy so you know is, is it a 14 year old okay where's that 14 year old hang out you know what type of you know are they in karate or in a basketball or you know do they wear pumas or do they wear vans you know i'm so old so forgive me for not being you know fashionable or anything but you know you want to really get down into the fine details of who this person is and that'll help you kind of um build this who this person who this ideal target is so we have another question for you navari from melissa and she says i know i know i thought about joining a bni or similar group but i'm intimidated by the requirement to give referrals but she really knows what bni is um given being new not having a huge network also the business in the businesses in them tend to be local brick and mortar or non-online service businesses not my real audience anyway how does that go for you 
Um, wow, that's that's perfect. Um, being that, I mean, when I joined, um, I was one of the very few businesses that was new um, to actually get accepted um, in a BNI group. Wow. And um, it's not the 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 beauty of BNI in in particular, and it works for me, is that that is true what you're saying within your statement, but also within the fact that. Um, you have to think about the other connections outside of BNI that people in your chapter um, may actually have. Um, I mean, there's Mavens, you know, in BNI. Um, there's other people with bigger businesses. I mean, the chapters differ as well. And you can also feel free to go to different chapters and view. Um, one thing I do in BNI and, uh, you know, within that is, you know, have your one-on-ones, meet everybody you can within your group. You know, network, talk with, talk with people, build relationships. Um, sometimes when I actually go to one on ones, we don't even talk about business. We just get to know each other, yeah. and uh, you know, see if that you know you can just naturally bond or relate to somebody. And from that, from just naturally, you know, getting a good feel for somebody and everything, um, people will just refer you like, hey, I know somebody who do X, Y, and Z. And um, you never know. I mean, I mean, for instance. I mean, I met Brian through uh, in, in BNI, and he happened to be a Maven, and so he can get you in touch with other people from nonprofits or other bigger businesses that you know people actually own yeah. or may need your services. Brian knows everyone. Projects you can get pulled <laughs> into. Yeah, so <laughs> you never know, you know, yeah. and uh, it, it's weird. And you know, I, I've been to different chambers of commerce as well, and you'd be surprised, like through the network, you would see some of the same people and some of the people may actually know and see you through somebody else that they know your, your your name or business have you know came up in conversation so you never know I, I wouldn't say I think it's more so how you use it um I would go and be an eye if anything else with a, a strategy as far as like networking um to really use your your advantage with it um so awesome. uh, yeah Awesome. Melissa says, what is your favorite business book? What was the question? What is your favorite business book? Um, Do you a have a favorite question. business book? Uh, <laughs> I read a lot more books on, I would say the brand gap is one. Okay. Um, it was about like Marty Numer. Um, there is another one uh, I can't think of at the moment um, off the top of my head, but that is a good question about it. If it comes back to me during this interview, I'll definitely bring it back up. We'll put it in the comments. Awesome. So we have, uh, Melissa has three on the way. You know, she's our number one winner of our competition, Melissa. Yeah. So she is Congrats on that, Melissa. Woo-woo. She has Entree Leadership by Dave Ramsey. Uh, the Business Boutique by Christy Wright. And shout out to the Wright organization because when I emailed them to ask permission to use I asked everyone permission, but she was the only one who, her people said, we're going to send you a free book. Like everyone else I paid for, I told them, you know, I'm going to pay for the book. I just want permission. They were like, oh yeah, you know, kudos, yay, thanks for using us. But she was the only one that was like, here's a free one. And it came in the mail. So woo-woo to the Wright. Christy Wright, her agency. <laughs> I'm a passion planner. All kind of goodies, goodies, goodies. Um, and then we're going to launch for, we have this small inner circle mastermind. So Navari will be in there. This part of his prize. Melissa will be in there. Tabitha will be in there. We're going to have so about 10 people in there. And we're going to launch. What month are we in May? Okay, we're going to launch. <laughs> Sorry, this is two businesses and two babies and a husband and all that kind of stuff. So my brain freezes on me, right? But, okay, so June, we're going to launch our first, um, my real mastermind meetings and all of us are going to get together and just really take that, take our in, inner circle to the next level. So super excited about that. Um, so, Navari, before we let you go, one, I just want to say thank you so much for taking time to hang with us again. I appreciate it. Absolutely. I want to say thank you so much well. for truly being a contributing and active member of our community. Yes. I appreciate and you for... Um... 
I cannot wait for Melissa. Awesome. So I would say, so Navari, before you leave us today, you know, we you know we do this every time we have a, a spotlight. You know, what is one thing you want to leave with our community? You left us with something before. What would be the one thing that you think is vital for your fellow savvy entrepreneurs to to know just about this journey and this community and anything? What are your what are some words of wisdom? I like your glasses, mm. by the way. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> um, good question. I believe last time I left everybody with uh, the sky is big enough for all birds to fly. So um, I think this time I will leave with um, uh, never withhold wisdom from mm. no one else for knowledge. Um, already share your wisdom. Already show your knowledge with someone else. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think today I just had like so much <laughs> on my mind. Uh, I wish I had something, you know, more to say today. But uh, where I'm at right now, I'm on a journey. I just feel like, uh, you know, this new era that we're in, um, um, showcasing transparency um, in this Trump area that we're in. I feel like this is just like, um, <laughs> I feel like that's just like the air, you know, through like social media and everything. I, yeah. I think the key now with some key right. and everything is just like really, you know, just be authentic, be yourself and, you know, show yourself to the world. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Thank you so much, Riley. I could talk to you forever, but I do realize that people have like other stuff, like businesses to run and, you know, stuff to do. <laughs> Just because I'm like kicking it, you know, at the National Harbor. So, hey. <laughs> Just because I'm not kicking nice. it doesn't mean everyone's not kicking it. Nice. But hopefully everyone got to enjoy a little bit of this experience with us today. And we have to promise that next time we do this, we will be face to face because we're not that far away from each other. And we're enjoying this beautiful no, sunshine no. and a couple of, you know, day drinking together. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Yes. Also, oh, Navarre, before you roll out, let again for anyone who's just chiming in or who will hop in on the replay. You know, where do they find you? Um, what services do you offer? And how would you be of service to the community? Definitely. So um, you can find me, we'll find my website at www.intuitivecreate.com. Um, you can find me on social media, intuitive underscore create. Um, that's Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram. And uh, pretty much what I do is I offer uh, brand identity design and strategy to uh, small businesses, um, solopreneurs also as well, but uh, pretty much really help you find your purpose for your brand so that I may actually create your vision through graphics. Oh, so you can tell your story to your community. So. Awesome. Find them on Instagram. Check out his website. You've already a huge resource. Andy is a wonderful contributing member to our community. Thank you again. Bye. All right. Appreciate <laughs> it. Bye, guys. Happy Friday. Happy Memorial Day. <laughs>